Okay, these notes are valence electrons and electron dot diagrams. Okay, let's talk about valence electrons. The periodic table is divided into vertical groups based on their properties. One of these properties is their ending electron configuration. So if you look at the periodic table, um, all the ones in group one end in S1, all the ones in the second group end in S2. So if you pull out your colored periodic table by groups, um, or by blocks rather, you have the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. Okay, so an element's valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level, which means it's the highest number. Okay, these electrons are in the S and P shells. So let's take a look at sodium. Sodium, when we do noble gas shorthand, is Ne, so it's the neon, and 3S1. Okay, so that means it has one valence electron. So basically, we can use these group or these um, blocks to kind of tell how many elect valence electrons they have. Um, but I'm actually going to show you a shortcut. So we're not really worried so much about this. Um, you can figure out how many valence electrons an element has based on what group they're in. Okay. Okay. So this is the periodic table that you can get off of the additional resources. Um, you do have a periodic table. And I know I told you to put like S1, S2 at the top. So what I want you to do now is if you have one, if you don't have one, just take a look at this video and what is on the assignment is a periodic table with the groups already labeled. So like I have group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So I have one on um, this assignment that's labeled by groups. That's already got the groups above it. Um, I don't think I've got the periods on it. They don't really matter at this point in time. Okay. So we're going to use these group numbers to figure out the number of valence electrons. Okay. So hopefully you guys can keep coming back to this if you want. Um, as I said, if you have your one that you colored by blocks, you can go ahead and put the numbers above it. And that way you can follow along. Okay, so we're gonna talk about valence electrons here as far as based on groups. So let's just take a look at sodium real quick. Go back to sodium. Sodium was Ne and 3S1. So its highest energy level was the third energy level and it had one electron in that. So that had one valence electron. And that's kind of the same with all the elements in group one. Because if you look at your periodic table that you colored by blocks, that whole column is S1. So the ending electron configuration is S1. That's the highest energy level. And they all have one electron in that highest energy level. So all of group one elements have one valence electron. And group two, if you notice, they all end in S2, which means they all have two valence electrons. Now, groups 3 through 12 are the transition elements. Now, if you notice, they all are the D block. So their last electrons are actually in the, the energy level before. So technically, they all have two valence electrons because... That's the S. They, remember, if you look at uh, scandium, scandium is argon with 4S2 and then 3D1. So all the electrons that are in the outermost energy level, which is the fourth energy level, are all S2. Okay. So as far as you guys are concerned, groups 3 through 12 have two valence electrons. Now, after this, it gets a little, not tricky, but it's a little different. So group Group 13 is the next one. And no, it does not have 13 valence electrons. Okay, so let's look at group 13. Group 13, if you look at a boron, boron's electron configuration would be helium plus 2s2, 2p1. Okay, so you're still looking at the twos. So it has three electrons in that outermost energy level. So in fact, that's for all of the group 13. They have three valence electrons. Group 14, 
has four valence electrons because their ending electron configuration, if you look at carbon, carbon is 2s2, 2p2. So when you add the s and the p's up, it's four. So we're not really going to test you guys on whether you can figure out somebody, the elements electron configuration, or I mean, um, valence electrons based on their electron configuration. So just basically what we want you to know is groups thir in group 13, all of those elements have three valence electrons. All of the elements in group 14 have four valence electrons. All of the elements in group 15 have five valence electrons. Group 16 has six valence electrons. Group 17 have seven valence electrons. And the last group, or group 18, they all have eight valence electrons. Now, why do we care? Well, when we get into the next unit with bonding, most atoms bond with their valence electrons, all but group 18. And when we go into the organization of the periodic table, one of the properties of group 18 is the fact that those are noble gases. They are inert. They don't bond at all. OK, and we'll go into the reason why when we get into ionic. So basically, the things you need to know are groups one have one valence electron. Group two has two, 13, three, 14, four, 15, five, 16, six, 17, seven, 18, eight. If you know those things, you're good to go. OK, so we'll talk about electron dot diagrams next. OK, for this one, we're going to talk about electron dot diagrams. Now, basically, electron dot diagrams are ways of representing the valence electrons that an element has. So if you look at hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence electron. Of course, hydrogen has one electron, period. So we put the symbol down. Now, this symbol represents the nucleus and any inner electrons. So any electrons and all the protons and all the neutrons are represented by that H and then not there. Okay. Cause it has one valence electron. And then if we look at helium, which has now helium is in group eight, you're like, Oh, well it has eight valence electrons. Actually helium doesn't helium only has two electrons, two electrons period. And they're both the valence electrons. So helium is represented by two dots at the top. OK, so that's kind of how helium is. Helium's the weird one out of all of these. Now let's go into lithium. Lithium also has one valence electron. So lithium is represented here like that. OK. OK, so let's do beryllium next and all the rest of the ones in group two look this way. So there's two valence electrons in this one. Now, beryllium, we write it like this. The only reason helium is written with the two dots at the top is because helium doesn't bond with anything. It's one of those inert um, gases. It's a, it's a noble gas, so it doesn't react with anything. So those two electrons are basically paired up. They're fine. They're, that valence electron is full. Okay, so we only put the, the two dots together when we're filling it up if that makes any sense. So beryllium and all the rest of them in group two are represented with two dots, not together. Okay. They're separated. So now if we go to group 13, we go to boron. Boron has three valence electrons. So boron is done this way. And it doesn't matter where on there, as long as you're doing north, south, east, and west, those are the four places you can put them. You can put them anywhere around it, as long as it's on north, west. now. So north, south, east and west. That's kind of how they're written on the four different places. Um, but you can put them anywhere. It doesn't matter. Boron could look like this. Bo I mean, however you want to do it, boron could look like this. It doesn't matter as long as you have three of them and they are apart. I just like to start at the top and work my way around. That's just easier for me to keep track. So carbon has four valence electrons. So carbon has one at each end, okay? North, south, east, and west. And this is all because they bond. 
So we're talking about bonding electrons. Your valence electrons are your bonding electrons. So they're going to bond by pairing up with other electrons. But we'll talk about that when we get to ionic and covalent. Right now, I just want you to see how they look. Okay, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So nitrogen, now nitrogen, you have to put two together. And as I said, it does not matter where you put the two. You could put the two at the bottom. You could put the two at the top. You could put the two on the one side or two on the other side. It doesn't matter as long as you have two together on one part and then three on the other. Okay. Okay. So after nitrogen is oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons. So oxygen has, they're done like this six. So two of them are paired up and two of them are not. And then fluorine, there's seven valence electrons. And as I said, it doesn't matter where you put the two. I just like to go around in a circle. It just makes it easier for me. But as long as you have seven valence electrons, remember only at the four spots, you're good. And then neon, it's an N by the way, has eight valence electrons. So neon, like all of the noble gases, so all the ones in group eight, look like that. Okay. So for fluorine, all the ones in group seven look like that for oxygen, all the ones in group 16 look like that. Okay. So that's how they look. So hopefully this was quick and easy for you and painless. Um, so just work on the, the basically the practice problems and you should be good. Okay. Goodbye.